It's not you, it's you. Welcome back to another video in Spanish Essentials. Today we're going to explore one of the first curiosities that anyone learning the Spanish language encounters, and that is the difference between informal and formal speech. I'm going to show you a couple of case studies and give you some examples to explain this idea, but it boils down to an idea of speaking directly to individuals as you communicate in, in written or spoken communication. And anytime you address someone where in English, you would be using the word you, which we have in blue here. And so we're going to take a look at, um, at some case studies and we're going to understand informal and formal speech and how you might apply informal or formal speech in your conversations based on your audience. We're going to begin with a, um, an employee at a company, Anita. And outside of work, Anita is talking with her best friend and says, Hey, what's up? Want to grab lunch tomorrow? Text me later. Some common sentences that Anita might say to her best friend. There is a salutation, an invite for lunch, and then some way to, to continue the conversation later. Now, I'm going to take those same three ideas, those same three goals to greet her friend, to offer lunch, and then to con an, an, an invitation to continue the conversation later. I'm going to put those in another setting. And this is at work. So here's Anita with her coworkers, and now she's addressing her boss. She says, good morning, ma'am. How are you doing today? Can we meet tomorrow over lunch to discuss budgeting? I will send you an email when I get back to my office. So what this is showing, I mean, it, it's really showing a lot about Anita and her, her um, consciousness and, and, and how she approaches conversations in her personal or her, her work life. But notice she's using really, really polite forms of address like ma'am or very well-developed sentences, how are you doing today instead of just what's up. And even the invitation to eat lunch has some type of relevant work matter at hand to discuss budgeting. Maybe she's not going to invite her boss to lunch for some casual conversation, but there's some reason th that's appropriate for her to uh, invite her, her boss to lunch. And even I will send you an email back when I get back to my office. So she's not, she's actually choosing to be the one to follow up to, so her boss doesn't feel like she has to remember something. So she's, she's taking a lot of care here. She's respectfully addressing her boss. And so this is brings up the idea of informal and formal speech. So you may have guessed already that when Anita was addressing her friend, she was using informal speech. Informal speech is speech that you might use with your friends, your siblings, your spouse, or if you have children, maybe your children. Whereas formal speech, which we saw when Anita was speaking to her boss, well, this is speech you would use with your parents, your coworkers, your boss, or your acquaintances. And I realize that some of these aren't perfect fits. For example, you might, um, you might address your parents in a very informal and casual way or your coworkers, or even your boss. It's all about that individual uh, relationship. You know, you have to gauge that on your own. If you think it's out of place or, or not wise to use, form, to use informal speech with your boss or your parents, then you would use formal speech. So that's a personal thing that, that comes from building relationships and understanding one another and, and how you'd like to address one another. And it comes, in more play in in Spanish than it does English because in English we could say how are you in either way we could say informally to someone that we know or we've known for for 10 years our best friend how are you or to our boss who we've we just now have met we just got hired and you're really trying to to uh, show as much respect as you can how are you so there's no differentiation between the you here which makes it simple and that's why in Spanish, when we do have a differentiation, a difference in the you, a whole nother word for informal speech or formal speech, well, that's what throws English speakers off the first time they are, they are presented with this idea that there could be something else that you could use. So informal speech, how are you, is como estas, como estas tu? 
oftentimes just como estas or como estas tú with that tú on the end. And formal speech, a slight change, you'll notice some changes, but just focus on the, the phrase itself, como esta usted. Now, take a moment, if you need to pause the video, do so, but identify what words mean you in the informal and the formal speech. Maybe you've decided that the similar words like como and estas and esta, even though there are some changes, perhaps those are going to be um, common or that the same things, how are, how are. And we know that the U is going to change, so this is the only word that's really changed much. And you're right, tu is you in an informal way or a relaxed and comfortable way, and usted is the formal way. And so, tu and usted, is, they both mean you. And there is a change. Depending on who you're speaking with, whether you're using informal speech or formal speech, you'll have to choose which, which form of you you'd like to use. So here's a situation. A professor or a teacher is talking to uh, one of his students, and the student's about to fall asleep in class, and he asks, are you okay? How might the professor address his student? If you've guessed in formal speech, you'd probably be right. Now, this isn't the case for every professor. Again, those are all in the relationships and building the, that rapport. But in my experience, Professors and teachers want to show a sense of rapport with their students and, and be on their same level. And so they use informal or casual way to make their students feel comfortable. Next situation, we have a client and a lawyer. And, um, well, take a moment and think, well, how would the client and the lawyer address one another? Would the client calls the lawyer and says, Hola, ¿cómo está usted? If you remember from a few slides ago, usted is the formal form of you. And so this is formal conversation. A client and a lawyer have a professional relationship with one another. And so they're going to be respectful of one another and, and, and use formal speech. And similarly, the lawyer will respond saying, I'm well, muy bien, gracias. Y usted, and you. Again, the formal you. So this is an exchange in which both people are showing equal levels of respect to one another in a business situation, a client and a lawyer. And then the client says, I'm good, estoy bien, and they, their conversation continues. All right, my last, my last uh, situation I have is a parent and their child, and you're going to see something interesting here. So if the daughter enters the kitchen and, and the mother's in the kitchen, um, just got in from work and s she says, what, what do you think? Informal or formal speech? She's going to use informal speech perhaps because she, uh, it's her daughter and, and she just is, he's going to use very familiar and tone with her. Hola, hija. Hello, daughter. Como estas? How are you? And how might, how might her child respond with informal or formal speech? Well, in this, in this uh, situation, the daughter, la hija, responds using formal speech. Hola, mamá. Estoy muy bien. Y usted, and you, a formal usted. In this situation, the daughter is showing respect to her mother. Again, relationships can differ. But in this situation, the, uh, the daughter is going to use respectful and formal speech. So... That's just the surface of, of informal and formal speech. But to understand the idea and to be able to say, well, in this situation, this person would use formal speech when speaking to this other person and vice versa. Once you can just hypothesize and think about different situations, then we'll get into how we change other words in the, in the sentence. Like you'll notice these changes, um, estas, and on previous slides, esta. And we'll talk more about that, but this is just an intro video. So take a look at some of the other practices on my website. Maybe you have a homework assignment that goes along with this. And, um, and, well, message me with any questions. And I'll see you in the next video.